Alright, today we're going to be taking a look at the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1964. Really love this guy, so let's get into the review. Alright, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to hit up my channel for more action figure videos. If you subscribe, hit the little bell icon, otherwise YouTube won't let you know I uploaded Jack. And if you haven't checked out the last video I uploaded, please do at the info tab popping up on the top right of your screen. Alright, starting with the box. Let me just say, I absolutely adore this packaging design here. Something about the sea green colors and that smoky earth texture effect going on here just makes me love this figure even more for some reason. I miss how they used actual portraits of the corresponding suit on the front of these boxes. And that face takes up all the real estate on the front given that it was an exclusive, so no window packaging here on this one. Overall, great packaging design. I wish they still did them like this. Oh man, the paint details in the sculpt. Oh man, Yuji Sakai, you're a sculpting god. A Monster Arts without Yuji Sakai, I want nothing to do with you. This Monster Arts beautifully captures the rough textured suit to a T with that charcoal gray body. First off, let's start with the head. The signature pronounced brows of the pissed off looking eyes are wonderfully done. Something about those eyes may look off, but that's just how the suit was. They had this really weird fish eye film gloss over them, and they did it here with plastic and it looks great. It really makes this Godzilla look like he's done with your shit. The teeth are painted well along with the inner mouth. Moving down the body, you can see lots of great details here in the figure where they use a greenish paint on the Mosu Goji's features, such as his breastbone, the knees, and even the dorsal fins. Once again, the dorsal fins look great here, with the middle row being the largest. And yes, I know, there may be a gap there. No big freaking deal. The paint of the dorsal fins also reaches all the way to the tip of the tail, and the tail is also sculpted great, with the ball jointed segments not affecting how good it looks. The claws on the hands and feet also look great, no complaints here. Overall, in terms of looks, I can't find anything to complain about with this Godzilla, at least in terms of the paint details and sculpt. Now does this figure move as good as it looks? Well, for the most part, yes. In terms of articulation, Godzilla's got a good range of movement in the neck. You got some ball joints in there. He can move his head around like this. He can also look left and right. He can look up quite a bit and also look down pretty menacingly. Along with the conjunction in the waist, you get him to look down pretty good. His mouth does open and close on a hinge, just make sure that you don't scratch the paint on the teeth with your nails. Like I said before, upper body, you get some side to side, a little pivot action there. You can bend down a good amount, but of course the gap, uh, I know, just use trickery. You can get him to stand up a decent amount, he can only stand up so straight, but you know, given the nature of the figure, he looks pretty good, all things considered. The arms, this is where I have a little bit of an issue. This arm is fine. Um, yeah, this arm is not fine. Make a liar out of me, you son of a bitch. The arms, more so my right arm than the left arm, you can get them to move around 360, but do know that you're gonna be rubbing up against the sculpt. As you can see, these shiny areas here, yeah. That's where the sculpt is bump rubbing up against each other, and you kind of want to be careful with that. Um, the elbows do bend as well. Uh, hello? Can you get back on there? What are you doing? You're making me look bad. Careful with the arms. The elbow can bend, but you also want to be careful with that. You can bend like about a 90 degree angle. You can't really get those arms to come out for a T-pose, sadly. And like I said before, the right arm in particular is the worst defender when it comes to trying to rotate it. It does like to pop out, but all you gotta do is just pop it back in there and just kind of stress it. But like I said, try not to stress it too much because sculpt is rubbing up against each other. You do get some rotation at the wrist as well, as well as some ball jointed movement there. Moving on to the legs, and this is where things get a little weird in terms of the sculpt. See how this triangle segment here, it kind of just messes with the sculpt a bit. Yeah, it's it's not that big a deal, honestly. I grew to accept it for what it was. It's not a big deal breaker. 
it does allow Godzilla to get more range of split mo motion here so you can get Godzilla to widen those hips quite a bit it's not a big deal like I said before unless it really bothers you and if it does then you got issues but yeah it's not that big of a deal it's something they tried once and I don't believe they ever did it again in terms of the leg you can get it to rotate all the way around you get a lot of good move motion there you can rotate it at the kneecap bend at the knee a good amount and of course you get some good motion there out of the ankle for the tail articulation lots of ball joints in this tail and you get a good range of movement out of the tail and wait a minute where's the tip of it oh God. mothra was that you how many times do i tell you you have to leave the tail alone get back here yeah in terms of the tail good articulation but this last two segments this solid piece here and this little sleeve oh god they like to pop out a whole lot and it's really annoying but overall in terms of articulation this guy is as good as they come with little minor issues here and there now does godzilla 1964 come with any accessories no no he doesn't now in terms of size comparisons this is where a lot of people are going to find an issue with this guy here we have him with the SH Figure Arts King Joe, Alien Zareb, and the Ultraman A-Type, along with the SH Monster Arts Mothra Larvae, the SH Monster Arts Mechagodzilla 1974, the SH Figure Arts Gomora, notice how bigger Gomora looks, the Buleg Showa Ghidorah, and uh, my coffee mug, the 1954 Monster Arts Godzilla, and of course Super Mario Zilla's favorite Mothra, and the SH Monster Arts GMK Godzilla and 1995 Rebirth. Yeah, I could do this all day, you kind of get the idea. He is the Peter Dinklage of SH Monster Arts. All right, in terms of my final verdict, this was released back when Tamashi was really in the swing of things for the Monster Arts line. The sculpt is as accurate as you're gonna get, and the paint is applied expertly. The biggest drawbacks I can find on this guy is one, his lack of accessories, and two, his size in comparison with the rest of the line. This is the smallest of the Godzillas ever released, and it definitely sticks out when you have him next to some of the other monsters in the line. And no, this isn't in scale with the others. They were trying to make a Showa line their own scale, and well, that didn't quite pan out. Now, if only there was another figure based off this suit with better proportions. Now, given the aftermarket prices on this guy being well over what he was upon release back in 2013, my best suggestion is to hunt down the repaint, the Emergence version. That one at least comes with a beam. Hardcore Mozi Goji fans will want this regardless, and I did. But if you're not like me, this is a fine release that you can definitely pass on. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe hit the like button and subscribe. If you would like to see more Monster Arts reviews on the channel, let me know in the comment section below which Monster Arts you would like me to cover next. All right, collect everything, connect everything. The end card was here with other videos you might be interested in. So definitely check those out when you get the chance. All right, I'll see you all soon.